Hey, what's up everybody, new here. Today I'm bringing you a Rainbow Six Siege video discussing roaming. So, why am I going to talk about roaming? Well, because I've put a lot of time into Siege on the PC, and I've only started playing the Xbox version this weekend as it was free. The experience I had was completely different to what I'm used to on PC, but hopefully this video will explain what roaming is, and give you some helpful advice to help you roam yourself. So, what is roaming? Roaming is when a defender doesn't stay in the objective room, but moves around the building or the map to pick off the enemy team or to slow their advance. As a roamer, you can do numerous things to help your team, even while not in the objective. If you know where the enemy team has spawned, then you can stay near that location and see if they breach near you where you can pick up a kill or two, or flank them later on in the game. These two options are seen as aggressive and passive roaming. As an aggressive roamer, you want to get into as many firefights as possible in as many different spots as possible. This will make you a key threat to the enemy that, and they will have no choice but to hunt you down or risk getting flanked in a bad situation later on. However, as an aggressive roamer, there is a high possibility of you dying and putting your team on disadvantage early on, so it's good to be able to know when to be aggressive, when to fall back, and when to be passive. Now, as a passive roamer, you will be much more subtle and quiet than the, the aggressive roamer. They can hide away from the enemy and flank later on in the game, providing your team doesn't die in the objective straight away. You can also barricade doors and windows at random locations, forcing enemies to slow down to either break down the barricades, take the long way around, or to check their surroundings. This is a great way of causing the enemy team to waste very valuable time pushing the objective. Time is a huge part of Siege. A couple of minutes seems like a very long time, but with good roamers you can end up spending the entire round trying to find them or kill them. And then you have maybe 20 seconds to push the objective and it leaves you in a terrible spot. As a roamer, your main job is to make the enemy team waste time. Not flank them and kill the entire enemy team in a single clip. As long as you can slow down the enemy team, split them up or pick off one or two of them, then you're doing your job for your team. Any operator can be a roamer. However, you want to keep in mind their speed. A 3-speed operator covers a whole lot more ground than a 1-speed operator, so keep in mind how far away from the objective you should be, should you need to get back to support your team in a hurry. A very strong roamer in the game right now is Pulse, who I'm playing as in this video. Due to his gadgets and his 3-speed, he can gain a lot of information very quickly from his gadgets, it's just a little scanner and it gives off the heartbeats of enemies, and this makes him very hard to sneak up on to flank. However, if he is flanked or caught in a crossfire, he will die very quickly. Other examples of operators that can roam are Doc, Jaeger, Bandit, Smoke, Valkyrie and Frost. But like I said earlier, any operator can roam as long as you keep your particular operator in mind such as their speed, your loadout, your gadget and how many members of your team are still alive and kicking in the objective. Another thing you want to have on your side is map knowledge. If you know the map layout very well then half of your battle is finished. I wouldn't advise roaming if you're still learning the various maps on Siege. Time is as valuable to roamers as it is attackers. You need to be able to cover the most distance in the short amount of time as possible to catch the enemy off guard or at vulnerable moments. The last thing you want as a roamer is to take the wrong turn, get lost in the map or simply take the longest route possible to support the team. You can go into private matches on your own to explore the maps if you want to run them quickly and safely rather than trial and error online. Roaming can be a tough job, especially when the enemy team uses their drones and are communicating very well with one another. But hopefully I've made the job of roaming a little bit easier for you with this video. But I'm not quite done yet, I just want to show you a few examples of what I spoke about from this gameplay to further demonstrate how roaming can be a huge advantage to your team. As I said, I'm playing Pulse in this match. It's currently 3v5 in overtime and luckily we were on defense. The first thing I did was run up above the stage as generally a safe spot to go camera checking and not a lot of people really rush this spot. I planned to play this round passively and probably to end up going for a clutch, but when I moved, Thermite below me heard me. This was lucky. So now, one enemy knew I was up here. I still played it passively and waited. Sure enough, Thermite decided to push me, which was a huge mistake on his behalf. First of all, he never breached any walls. This limited his team greatly in terms of breaching into the room for the objective. Secondly, he came up the ladder, which isn't generally a good idea. He should have flanked around and blew out one of the walls to come get me. And on top of that, he came up way too late for me to even be flashed if I was hit by the flashbang. And thirdly, he came up against a shotgun. Now once I killed Thermite, the enemy knew I was going to be up top somewhere and I had two options. I had to either run or stay put and I decided to stay. Why? Because I was in a safe spot as Pulse. They could only flank from tower or the ladder and I knew tower had been cleared so the likelihood of an enemy still being there was very low. Now with the wall open, they could see me easily so I had to stay put behind the sandbag. Especially since they had rifles at a distance. I stood no chance in a firefight so I had to wait. Eventually they sent a drone up and confirmed that I was still there and now I had to execute my escape route and this is where my loadout, speed and map knowledge came into play. I opened up the trapdoor with the shotgun to allow me to drop down safely into the stage but then instead of running out of the stage or to tower I then opened up another hatch and dropped into the basement and hid. 
At this stage, the people focused on me had two options. They had to follow me or push objective. Luckily, they followed me and wasted even more valuable time. I kept playing passively, though, to give them an idea that I ran back to the objective and to give them this kind of like safe idea. This gave me another flanking opportunity, and with such very little time left and no thermite, the enemy were in a bad spot for sure for rushing the objective, since my two teammates were still alive in it. I moved up and flanked Sledge while Blackbeard focused on my two teammates. At this stage, he had to rush with no information other than I killed Sledge in the bathroom with a shotgun. I didn't bother reviving my teammate who was down, as that puts me out of my way from the objective and leaves me open to getting shot. Instead, I waited off in the sealed room by the hostage and waited for the push with my scanner. Once Blackbeard flashed the room, I knew he was coming in, and all I had to do was simply pop out, throw a nitro cell around the corner, and blow it up to secure an easy kill, trapped in the barbed wire, and winning the game. That's about all there is for this video now. If you have any questions about roaming or have any suggestions for siege videos, feel free to comment down below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider enlisting in the Nooblets. Hopefully, I will see you all in the next video. Alright? Toodles. Drop it.